All right, folks, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Bad Guy Shop. What's going on? <laughs> Tonight, we're going to be tearing down this uh, this motor. So Jake can uh, start looking inside of it to see what kind of carnage we've got going on. <laughs> carnage we've got going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell them what kind of motor we got there. All right, so we got a 5.3. Uh, I'm going to say an early gen 5.3, but it looks things with the old knock sensors and stuff. And... We're, we're pretty sure it ran. It may or may not have a cam in it. Yeah, well, I'm sure it has a cam in it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're, we're, uh, we don't know what's going on inside. I mean, it could have broken ring lamps, could have anything wrong with it. So with, with anything that's unknown, tear it down, see what you got. It's better to know what you have. It costs a little now, it costs a lot more in the long run if you don't. So yeah, we're at that. Uh, and Mark and Andrew are squaring up the subframe on the pair because we didn't do that. And apparently you have to do that for everything to line up. So uh, there's some interesting points on the bottom of the pair that you have to hook pump bobs to and straighten everything so the car goes straight down the road. So the boys are at that and uh, Master Tech Connor here and Corey and I are gonna yeah. tear on this. We brought in the uh, we brought in the big guns. Big guns. <laughs> somebody's got to be an expert, right? <laughs> at least one. At least somebody's going to know what they're doing. Yeah. Sweet. All right, folks, to explain what Andrew and I are doing under here, we're going to make sure this uh, subframe is aligned with the body. So it's really important to do that because if you don't, the uh, front clip or the bodywork won't actually line up right. All the gaps will be all messed up and nobody will be able to fix it. So basically, if you look back here on the bottom of the car, there's two holes. They're dowel alignment holes or they're alignment holes from the factory. Um, there's two of these. They're right in front of the spring pocket. And you can see Andrew's holding a string bob there. So basically, you put a piece of tape on the floor and uh, you measure from the front hole down to the, down to the, uh, sorry, you drop your string line down and you draw a, a mark there as a reference point. You do that on both sides. And then up here in the front pocket where the body mount is, there's an extra hole. A piece of 5 8 uh, all thread will fit in there perfectly, or you can buy the tools from Summit for 20 bucks or whatever. But basically, you put your pins in there, make sure they're hanging down straight, and you do the same thing and mark uh, on uh, your tape there. And then you measure front to back and side to side. I'll uh, drop a link to the procedure. Ah. All right, folks, a little update. Well, we measured everything, we did it twice, and uh, Apparently we're pretty good putting subframes in these cars because it was pretty much dead nut, dead nuts right on. It's <laughs> a little newbie Ooh. for you. That's a little newbie for you, isn't it? No. Dead what? nuts. Something's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Something's dead. Something's dead. All right, cue the high speed footage. Here the team is working on removing the top part of the engine, the valve covers, the rockers, the heads, etc. They are bagging and tagging parts as they go and putting things in large plastic totes. When they're done this part, they'll spin the block over and they'll do the same thing to the bottom side. The 
The unfortunate thing about these motors is you can't really tell if they are a 4.8 or 5.3 liter from the outward appearance. Once you have the heads off, the pistons give a clue, but in reality, it is the crankshaft and rods connected to the pistons that really tell you the truth. Our motor was in the car when we bought it, and it was advertised as a 5.3 liter with an aftermarket camshaft and roller rockers. We'll find out the truth as we uh, keep going down through the rest of this block. Oh, right into town. I'm cleaning up, buddy. Cleaning what are you doing? Tell, tell me what you're up to. Here. Uh, we just took all the brakes apart. We were just cleaning up booster and to get a prep for paint. And we got to get all the lines off. Let's show, show it surely, slowly but surely. I'll get it. Uh, we'll get it done. Nice. Yeah. Get her done. Get her done. What are you doing here, Connor? Uh, taking out the oil pan. Yeah. Taking out the oil pan bolts. What a nice oil uh -oh. pan. Uh-oh. So somebody, somebody put a jack under it. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. Sure is a pretty oil pan, though. It is pretty. I like it. it tends to fit our car very well. I'm very happy with that. Oh. Never. Try to keep it up clear to the beginning. Keep it straight, dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. These are the setback plates for the motor mounts. There you go. For those of you that don't know, that's how you. Oh, 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 man. Fail Mark's tools, fail on Mark's tools. Oh, okay. well, <laughs> we'll fix it here, hang on a second. Yeah. You can fix it. Anyway, <laughs> Mark probably was a little rough. He stepped back. The, the mounts on, on the LS style motors are further back. So these put put the clamshells a little bit closer so you put it in the same place as the stock 350 or small box chevrolet. Yeah, right. Simple solution. Simple solution. Right up. There you go. Oh, nice. All right. Move it up. You can go around the other side now. Have to get these over. All right. Keep it straight as you can. There you go. Looking straight. Yeah. There you go. As soon as you go, put it on the other side of your sword. Oh, it's not right. You okay? Yeah. Keep going. What size is all that? Do you want a 10 mil wrench? Look at that, he's got it now. There's zip like that, there. No, there's a bunch from that area. You gotta drop down on an angle. By the way, on that, I would say that's stock looking to me. This ain't nothing, this is a bone stalker. There's no crane, there's no electric. 
Well, folks, if you're paying attention, that's how it goes sometimes. You buy things with a little blind faith in people, and you find out they either didn't know what they were talking about, or they were a little less than honest. Unfortunately, that happens. A good bit of this car has been this way, and well, that's unfortunate, it is life, and well, what can you do? So as they say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And that's exactly what the bad gas crew here is going to do. Hey, there's a few more minutes of this video left, but while I have a chance, let me thank you for tuning in to this episode of Bad Gas Productions. Folks, please leave some comments below. And uh, by all means, if you have friends that might enjoy this content, please share. It uh, helps us out in a big way. Oh, and also hit the big thumbs up below. Heck, even if you don't like the video, hit the thumbs up twice or even three times. Well, folks, a little update. We got her all apart. See all the bits and pieces in the bin there. There's the crank and all the connecting rods and there's pretty much an empty block. So, we were told this was a 5.3 with a fancy cam in it and uh, some other, other bits and goodies, but really what we have is a 4.8 here with a sexy oil pan on it and some red paint. Yeah, so this thing's pretty much ready for a full overhaul. And that is how it goes. Right. eBay Motors, here we come. Yeah, junkyard motors and stolen motorcycles. Right on. <laughs> Where did the motorcycles come from? Where are the motorcycles? Hey guys, it's Sully at Bad Gas. Hope you liked what you saw in the video today. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe, or subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you're already subscribed, don't hit it again. But, uh, and share with your friends. It's free, and you know what? Someone else might really enjoy the content. Anyway, back at our fun day here in uh, Canada land. Remember, keep uh, both hands on the bars and throttle down. See ya.